Are we good to go? Yep, saw that, thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, thank you for attending the uh, Hampshire Police Crime Panel meeting today. The meeting is being webcast on YouTube and hosted by um, Hampshire County Council's website. Um, as part of the usual um, housekeeping, I have a sensible note prepared by Caroline here. Um, the first thing is fire arrangements. If there is a continuous alarm sounding at any point during today's meeting, proceed out of the doors, back towards reception, leave the building and congregate outside the Great Hall. Toilet facilities are available as outside the, the main room here today. Hearing loop, uh, this room is fitted with a hearing loop for the hard of hearing. Please turn your aid to T if required. Mobile phones, uh, please switch these to silent or turn them off. In accordance with social distancing guidelines, those attending today's uh, meeting are asked to wear a face covering unless medically exempt when moving around the room, although it may be removed when you are seated. Filming and broadcasting notification. The press and members of the public are permitted to film and broadcast this meeting. By entering and remaining at the meeting, you are consenting to being filmed and recorded and to possible use of those images and recording for broadcasting purposes. Well, thank you very much and uh, nice to see you all today. F item one on today's agenda is apologies uh, for absence. I have the following apologies. Councillor Stuart Bailey, Hart District Council. Council uh, Councillor Tonya Craig, East Lee Borough Council. Councillor Andrew Joy, Hampshire County Council. Councillor Philip Lashbrook, Test Valley Borough Council. Councillor Ken Muschamp, Rushmore District Council and Councillor Matthew McGee, Southampton City Council. Item two, do any of the members have a declaration of interest to make? For the avoidance of doubt, uh, whilst having worked with or otherwise being known to individuals being proposed under item three of the agenda, may constitute a personal interest, members are not required to declare this unless they wish to do so. Thank you. Item three, proposed appointments of members. Colleagues, you'll find these on pages 10, five to 10 of your um, information packs available to you. This report and subsequent addendum from the Democratic Support Officer to the panel sets out the proposed appointment of two Labour local authority co-opted members and two independent co-opted members of the Hampshire uh, Police and Crime Panel. I would invite uh, Caroline to introduce the report. Caroline, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, members. Um, as Peter explained there today, there is a report in front of you. Um, it outlines the appointments to the panel this year and how the, um, the panel intends to be politically proportionate to meet its balanced appointment objective. Um, you will observe that there is an addendum to today's report. Um, following uh, the publication of the papers, the panel did receive notification of a newly appointed member, which had an impact on the proportionality of the panel. Um, subsequently, the proposed appointment of Councillor Dorothy Baverstock was unable to proceed, um, and a new uh, nomination from the excuse me, the Conservative group will be sought ready for the meeting in October. Um, if you refer to the addendum members, you will see an updated list of recommendations. Um, I'm going to hand across now to Councillor John Beavis, who will provide members with an update on the recruitment process followed for the independent co-opted members. Thank you, Caroline. Um, as a member of the selection panel, I would like to thank Caroline for our, her outstanding attention to detail in manage, managing this very fair process. Thank you, Caroline. Um, the roles were advertised on the Hampshire Police and C Crime Panel website, Hampshire County Council Online job website, and social media. The details were also sent as part of a press release to Hampshire and the Isle of Wight media outlets, a number of whom printed the story with a link to the website. Details of the role inviting um, applications and onward sharing was, with others were sent out by email to over a hundred key stakeholders who had previously engaged with the panel. In total, there were 14 applicants for the two roles. The cross-party selection panel independently shortlisted applications for interview, scoring the participants on competencies and skills listed within the application pack 
before collectively agreeing to bring four candidates forward for interview. All four candidates were asked a number of questions at interview relating to the responsibilities of the Hampshire Police and Crime Panel and skills and knowledge and experience they could offer. The two candidates proposed for appointment were able to demonstrate these skills to a very high standard. After the interview, the selection panel unanimously agreed that Mrs. Shirley Young and Mr. Dave Stewart were without question the front runners as independent co-opted members and duly selected them for this role. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome them to the panel today. Thank you. Thank you, LeJohn. I now invite the proposed uh, members to introduce themselves. First of all, Councillor Tony Jones. Hi, I'm Tony Jones, Councillor for Bays and Soap and Dean. I represent South Ham. I was on the panel last year. It was very difficult last year because we were doing it on Zoom, and I won't hide that factor. But this year I hope to get more involved than what I did last year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I now invite Councillor Matt Reynard. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Councillor Matt Renyard. I'm the councillor for uh, Small Ward Coxford in Southampton, um, also on the Shadow Cabinet in Southampton for community safety. Um, thank you very much for uh, ha having me along to, to join the panel today and uh, I look forward to working with you all as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Renyard. Probably not needing much of an introduction, I now invite Dave Stewart to introduce himself. mic on now I think. Uh -huh. um, just a day Stuart, I'm previous chair of the panel from the past, um, now here as an independent and very pleased to be the independent representative um, for the communities of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight um, and I'm particularly interested in the area of complaints which we'll probably talk about in due course um, but again I'm very pleased to be rejoining the PCP team as I see it um, because I think it always has been a team uh, and I'm grateful for the fact that we're all here together and I'm sure we'll do our best for our communities of Hampshire and the island. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dave, and welcome. Um, Shirley Young, thank you. Good morning, I'm Shirley Young, the other independent co-opted member. I'm retired managing director of a unity authority. I'm delighted to join this team, which so far has demonstrated fabulous cross-party non-political working already and really look forward to being part of that and uh, excited to be with Dave, the other co-opted member. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley, and welcome. Do you members have any comments or questions of any of the uh, persons I've just mentioned? Thank you. Members are now asked to vote on the following recommendations which I'll read out. Proposed recommendations. That the panel notes its membership for a 2021 to 2022 municipal year as laid out in table two of this report that councillor tony jones and councillor matthew reynard are appointed to the hampshire police and crime panel as local authority co-opted members representing the labor group that a nomination for the vacant conservative additional local authority member be brought to the next meeting of the panel on the 29th of october that subject to the appointments proposed above the panel notes the panel membership is, at the current time, politically proportionate for the purposes of a balanced appointment objective as outlined in Table 3. That Mr Dave Stewart and Mrs Shirley Young are appointed as independent co-opted members of the Hampshire Police and Crime Panel until the annual meeting of the panel in 2024. Following the recommendations, could... Please, could uh, those members now appointed to the panel raise their name cards? Will you vote on those re recommendations, please? Yep. Happy days. Item four, election of the chairman. Call for nominations and a seconder for chairman of the panel and to the AGM in uh, 2021. I invite those nominations now. I'm 
would like to uh, nominate Councillor Simon Bound, please. Thank you. Could I have a seconder for that, please? I'm happy to second that proposal. Thanks very much. That's, that, that's good. I would now invite um, the uh, uh, elected um, chairman to come forward. Thank you, Simon. The, the chair will now carry on as per the script kindly prepared by Carolyn. Thank you very much. Brilliant. As, uh, thank you very much for that panel. Um, I just need to find my instructions from Caroline because we know they exist. Right, so first of all, um, it's my job to call for nominations and a seconder for the role uh, of vice chair of the panel until the AGM in 2021. So do we have any nominations? Let's go to John. Uh, could I nominate Mr. Dave Stewart, please? Thank you very much, John. Seconder? The seconded, Chairman. Brilliant, thank you, Trevor. Any other nominations? No, in that case, uh, Dave, you are successfully uh, appointed as my vice chair. Did you want to come and join me? <coughs> It always seems a bit of a palaver, sort of making sure you've got your masks and your drinks and, and your bits of paper. Uh, although I do, I have to say, panel, I quite like this as a new introduction for voting. Thank you for that, Peter. Yeah, it's great. Chairman, with your approval, just to make a couple of comments. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, first of all, personally, thank you very much, panel members, for um, putting your faith in me as a vice chair. Hope I will meet that expectation. But to be honest, more importantly, I want to congratulate Simon Bound for being chairman of the Police and Crime Panel. I know that there's a lot of positive support within the room for him in forming and doing this role, and I think that's been a very good choice. And he has my full support, and I'm sure he'll have that of the Police and Crime Commissioner and everybody else. So, um, and my way is just to say well done to him. Thank you very much, Dave and panel. That's very kind of you. I, I am, I, what I've noticed as well, because we are so far away, I'm going to have to keep doing a lot of this. So do forgive me. So next, it's on to item six, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, can I... Uh, ask if the panel agrees the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of March. Agreed. Agreed. You don't have to wave your card, John. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, you, we, we're not going to stop doing this now. Um, item seven, questions and deputations. There are no public questions or deputations uh, requested, received at today's meeting. Um, item eight, we go to chairman's announcement, announcements. First of all, uh, I think it's really important for all of us as a, a new panel to welcome our new Police and Crime Commissioner. Donna, welcome to the panel. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, and also to welcome those new members. So, of course, we've had a round of elections, um, probably more elections than we've had in a long time, uh, in all those ones that were delayed. So welcome to the 10 new members of the panel that we have, including our two new independent co-opted members. I think it's also um, just building on some of the things that, that Dave has said and, and previous members. Do you know what? This is a fantastic panel to be part of. And, and I can absolutely, you know, hand on heart say it's one of the most interesting, most of the, one of the most rewarding bits of work I've done as a councillor in my last six years. So I think it's really important to thank those people who have put so much work in over the years. So sadly, um, we no longer have Jan Warwick as our chair. Um, but she's now on the uh, executive um, board for Hampshire County Council. So thank you very much to Jan and also our really hardworking two previous independent members of the panel in Bob Perkis and Michael Coombs, 
which um, I certainly believe will be uh, people who leave quite a hole for us as a panel and see it as my job as a chair to sort of really sort of build back so that we can make sure that we fill those gaps. And I'm, I'm really grateful for our two independent members. I think you'll really help us with that. Um, the other thing that I'd just like to say as far as chairman's announcement, um, I have um, this morning been presented with um, nine copies and I, I'd just like to make sure we minute um, the titles of the book, if that's all right, Caroline. Um, uh, for the book, The Hidden Hancock File, uh, A Whistleblower Silence, The True Story of what, How It Happened by Stephen George. I, I have got nine copies, and what I, I've, I've um, committed to do is to make sure every member of the panel gets a copy of that book, if that's all right. But leave that with Caroline and I, and, and we'll make sure that happens. So that's all the announcements that I have as the chair. Uh, now I'd just like to pass over to Donna as far as the Police and Crime Commissioner's announcement. announcement. So welcome, Donna. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Chairman, and uh, good morning. Um, I'd like to start by um, echoing some of Dave's comments to say a huge congratulations and well done to Simon for taking on uh, the role of Chair of the Police and Crime Panel. And actually, I think um, you know, a very deserved um, thank you as well to Dave for the term of office that he served as the previous chair. Um, and I think he did a, you know, a sterling job in keeping everyone motivated, happy, moving forward. And from what I can see from the meetings I've watched online, working as a team which is you can't ask for more than that which is great and I'm pleased that Shirley's picked that up already that there's obviously a team atmosphere um it's slightly an odd position isn't it really with me because um you know I'm not directly part of your team although I really do feel like I want to be if I'm honest with you um so I'm hoping that this is a start of a new chapter that's quite a new panel now that's constituted um and obviously I am a new police and crime commissioner and whilst I know many of you in the room um this is a very different role so for with Narinda and with Dave and with Simon and you know Dave who I've, I've set through many many meetings hours of meetings at Portsmouth together um this is a very new role for me uh and I, I I want to be a very open and communicative uh, commissioner. I want to share things with you. I want to take you on the journey that I will be going on over the next three years of my term of office. Um, I'd like to also um, formally say congratulations to Shirley and to the new members uh, on the panel, the politically appointed members, and also to echo my thanks to um, Bob Perkis and to Michael Coombs. Um, it, I, I did meet informally with um, some of the committee, the majority of the committee members, panel members last week, and actually Bob was on that, that call, and I know that he has played a fantastic role as an independent um, member. So, uh, you know, it, um, I'm pleased we have some new independent members here today. And Michael Coombs, of course, I understand his personal background. I have uh, met Michael previously, uh, and I know he does a sterling job with Neighbourhood Watch. Um, what I thought I would do today, if it's okay, I want to talk to you, I want to start a little bit about, about me, um, for those of you that, uh, that this is the first time that we are meeting across a room, um, talk a little bit about the election and my policy commitments, uh, my vision, um, national focus that I am sort of considering at the moment, but I'd very much welcome people's feedback on that. A um, bit of a constabulary update. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about criminal justice, um, touch on the crime plan, and then how I see things working with you. And I think through this panel, it's, it's not customary for the commissioner to take questions. Um, I am, for those of you that have worked with me before, I'm very happy to answer a question of anybody, but I am in the hands of the chairman. I appreciate he has an agenda and a time. So if there is time and I don't talk for too long, I will do my best, I'm a politician. Um, I will, uh, I'm very happy to take any questions and then perhaps moving forward after this, Simon, I appreciate that slightly on the hop. Uh, maybe we can have a discussion moving forward with Caroline about how we address that moving forward. So, so uh, the good thing to say, Donna, is we're ahead for time. Ooh. So I think we can, we can indulge questions from the panel if you're happy to, to deal with them. Well, I know that when I'm, if I'm listening to someone talking about something, um, if I know there is an opportunity to ask questions, I'll start logging things down <laughs> throughout things they're saying. So I thought it probably best for me to give you that advance warning. Um, first of all, I just want to start by saying, you know, to the, to the people of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, the people that I work for, my boss, um, which includes all of you as well, um, thank you very much. Because actually, you know, um, coming from Portsmouth, uh, and being a conservative, I'm not used to large electoral majorities. It's not something that goes hand in hand with conservative in urban city areas. But actually, I was elected as police and crime commissioner with the largest majority of any commissioner of any political party in the country um, on the 6th of May. Um, I achieved almost 70% of the vote. And for me, as somebody who knows what the value of that vote is for an individual, it's very humbling and I'm very, very grateful. Um, 
Most of you will probably be aware my background in, um, in the public sector in local government has spanned 13 years uh, and that was my time on Portsmouth City Council with four of those years serving as the executive leader of the council. Um, before that my professional bank, uh, background was in banking and when I had my children and took a career break, that's really when I decided I wanted to get involved in public service and give something back. And at that point, I was 27 years of age, in between having my first child and my second child, um, I applied to become a magistrate here in Hampshire. And I was the youngest magistrate in the country when I was appointed to the what is called the South East Hampshire bench, which is effectively Portsmouth. Um, so a very busy court. Um, straight away, I think within the first 12 months, I got involved with magistrates in the community and going out and speaking to children about what magistrates are, what they do, uh, answering questions like, have you ever met a robber? And um, have you ever met a murderer? Uh, you know, so those kind of questions from primary school age children, but actually getting them engaged in what the judiciary means, what a magistrate is, and that there are people out there who are there to protect them and keep them safe. So my journey of connecting with the public started many, many years ago when I was in my, in my late 20s. Um, I then chaired uh, the bench in Hampshire for, um, or I was a bench chair, I should say, for uh, 13 of my 16 years serving as a magistrate. And with a heavy heart, I had to resign last month when I was elected because, of course, it's a, a complete um, you know, conflict in terms of being police and crime commissioner in the same county that you are a serving magistrate. Um, I've also served on the LEP, so in terms of knowing businesses across our two counties, beautiful counties of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, uh, working with people like Alistair Welsh at ABP in Southampton, with you know the chief executive of Southampton Airport and Farnborough Airport and some of the larger organisations uh, and, and companies, employers that we have in Hampshire. I know these people, I can pick up the phone to them and I hope that if there is ever any kind of need for my services or my team, that we are there to support them and that will mean I can hit the ground running slightly quicker than otherwise I would have done. Um, having come from a local authority background, of course, I understand the value of partnership working. I understand that there is no I in team and that actually we are collectively the local government family together. Um, and my office is very much governed by the same rules as council, so those that all of you are currently living by. Moving on then to my policies. Uh, there were um, quite a few um, and if you want to have a look at that please have a look at my Facebook page or my website or my Twitter account and you'll get various bits um, but my, my top sort of few I'm going to just dwell on for a moment the people of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight told me unequivocally when I carried out a very comprehensive crime survey in August last year, which finished mid-September, over th nearly 3,000 responses, that they want more police on the streets. They appreciate that policing is not necessarily rocket science. They know it's a numbers game. More police, more detection and more prevention. That came across to me loud and clear. And so my number one priority, and it will be my number one priority in my police and crime plan, is to have 600 more police on the streets by the end of 2023 and continue. So I don't want to stop at 600, I want to continue, but that is my commitment. I've spoken to the Chief Constable about that number and she has given me her assurance that we are already ahead of the game and that she can deliver the 600 by the end of 2023, which of course I'm delighted about. Secondly, to increase police visibility. It's all very well and good having more police officers, but if you don't see them and people don't feel safer in their communities, there is little point in having them there. So we need to make sure that as a constabulary and me pushing the constabulary and working with the Chief Constable, we do everything that we can to make sure that we are removing bureaucracy, removing inefficiencies to enable officers to be out on the street if they are in the response and neighbourhood teams doing the job that actually they also want to do. Thirdly, antisocial behaviour. There has been uh, a massive um, increase in antisocial behaviour over the last five years, um, and therefore I have made an announcement that I'm setting up an antisocial behaviour task force. And those of you that are also CSP chairs or cabinet members, I've started, I've got meetings in the diary and I'm sort of talking to you and explaining to you how I think that the task force should work. Of course, it will be collaboratively, so I really want to get everyone's feedback. So all CSP chairs, CSP managers um, and cabinet members so that I can make sure that it's going to work for all of you as much as for my office and also for our district commanders because I think that's a kind of three-pronged attack really there. 
Rural crime is important. We know that rural crime has become far more sophisticated over the last few years. And in fact, the constabulary now in most cases do count uh, rural crime as um, serious organized crime. Uh, this is not opportunistic lead thefts anymore. It is very often uh, of an organized nature. And as a consequence, it has been escalated within the constabulary as you may have expected, but that was certainly one of my policies. Uh, next policy was a review of the 101 service, how it works how we are going to start bringing customer service into the constabulary uh, and making sure that we are giving the public feedback when they report a crime. People have said to me non-stop for 14 months since I was selected as the candidate uh, for the Conservative Party that there is no point in reporting low-level crimes because nothing gets done and all you get is a crime number. I want people to stop saying that. And the only way for me to get them to stop saying that is to give them what they actually want and give them some feedback and to let them know what we're doing to detect and investigate crime. Um, I'm going to talk about the estates review uh, slightly uh, in, a, in a moment, um, but we, one of my policies was also to review the estate strategy and to look at opening more police stations. We are going to have 600 more police officers. We need places for them to be based and work. Um, high harm, I'm not going to dwell too much on the high harm because it, it is largely going to remain unaltered. There are a number of statutory responsibilities on the Chief Constable's shoulders and on mine, which means that the approach that we are taking towards high harm I think is correct, and I don't think there was any need for me to alter that or tamper with that going into the election in my pledges. So moving on to my vision um, as your commissioner. Well, my vision um, being a parent, a citizen, uh, someone who has lots of family living in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight and many, many friends and colleagues is I want Hampshire and the Isle of Wight to be two of the safest counties in the country to live. I want our children and our elderly people to walk the streets without fear of violence or harm or robbery or someone knocking on their door and trying to rip them off. Um, I think it's the least that we can do. Uh, it's such an important public service, policing uh, and, and the criminal justice system, which I'll come on to. And we need to make sure that that's working well. And I think that the role of the commissioner is to make sure that the, uh, the wheels are oiled and everyone is working in the right direction. And where there are issues, I'm highlighting them, I'm spotting them, I'm listening to you and other colleagues telling me, and I'm acting, which is very important. Um, for me, one of the best ways and easiest ways to prevent uh, uh, crime and to, and, to pre and to reduce the levels of crime in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight and therefore the levels of harm is to actually prevent young people from becoming criminals in the first place. If you can stop 12 and 13 year olds from carrying knives and smoking marijuana and then selling drugs to fund their own marijuana addiction and then getting involved with actually some not so nice characters that mean that they start getting involved in more violent behaviours and then it moves on to exploitation and the list grows and then they're shoplifting to fund addictions and then class B is not enough, they need class A and it escalates. Um, you know, we need to not be criminalizing children and we need to be giving them the support and talking to kids at year nine in secondary schools about smoking marijuana and the harm and risk it's too late if they've been smoking marijuana since they were you know 10 or 11 we need to be educating children in the top end of primary in years five and six and in year seven and i've already started some work on the policy around this because for me at the moment I used this analogy when I was talking to the panel the other day, but it's a bit like a seesaw. Uh, because of um, uh, the reduction in spending over the last nine or ten years and because of um, the pandemic, uh, nearly all constabularies across the country have moved to dealing with high, pretty much high harm only, and that's what they've been looking at. We now need, we've got growing budgets last year and this year, we've got the Police Uplift Programme, and therefore we need to make sure that we are spending money uh, in more preventative rather than reactionary and detecting crime once it's happened. Let's stop it happening in the first place. And I think with some clever commissioning and some inventive ideas, we can really do that. And finally, with my vision, I really want to be highly visible. I don't want anybody in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight at the end of my three-year term to be saying, what's that role? What does it do? We don't need it. I want them to know what I do. I want them to know what the value is. I want them to know that I'm there to serve them if they have an issue. Um, I will be sharing lots of information on social media. I'm going to be, I have already discussed this with the constabulary about sharing some slightly more controversial stuff, some things that perhaps the police have kept behind the scenes for many years, um, sharing information as I did last week about a forensic, a forensic unit that I'd visited in Hampshire where we're doing forensic testing. Sharing things like that so the public know what they're getting for their precept and what they're getting when they're paying their income taxes. My national focus. So in terms of the national focus, um, at the um, 
the AGM of the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners, APCC, there are lots of acronyms I'm learning. Um, I'm hoping to be appointed, I, I should be appointed um, in just over a week's time as the national lead for victims. Um, and that is a post that is joint with um, the Deputy Mayor of London, so Sadiq Khan's Deputy, uh, Labour Deputy, um, uh, effectively his Police and Crime Commissioner, her name is Sophie Linden. And we'll be working very closely, Sophie and I, with Dame Vera Bird, who is the National uh, Victims Commissioner. So, um, Big portfolio, lots going on, particularly following the Sarah Everard and the now government agenda around violence against women and girls. Um, and of course, um, you know, there were some pretty big uh, reviews that have come out over the last couple of weeks, which I'll touch on a bit later. Um, I'm also going to be the national lead for serious organised crime and counter-terrorism. Um, so uh, perhaps some stuff that will be slightly more under the radar, but nonetheless really important for us with airports, ports um, and, you know, gateways into the UK, which therefore create vulnerability. So uh, very much uh, looking forward to being involved in that. And I'm going to be taking up a seat at the next meeting as a non-executive director of Blue Light Commercial, which is the company, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, that, that procures equipment, cars, whatever it may be, uniform, um, to support constabulary should they want to purchase from that. And of course, with my commercial background, um, I'm hoping I can add something to, uh, to that board. And finally, I really want to be building much stronger links with the Ministry of Justice. I think commissioners over the last, the first nine years of their terms of office have very much been looking and wedded towards the Home Office. Um, and I think there is a much greater desire now from the Prime Minister and from the government for commissioners to be working across the two key government departments, one being the Home Office and one being the Ministry of Justice. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty well connected with the Home Office, but the MOJ, there's a little bit more work for me to do there. So moving on to Hampshire Constabulary. Um, so the Police Uplift Programme, as I, as I mentioned, um, that commitment there from Olivia Pinkney that they can deliver on that priority that I have of the 600. Um, actually, since April last year, the Constabulary have recruited 482 new officers and PCSOs combined. Um, now, that does um, include, obviously, people replacing people that have left and or retired. Uh, but of the actual net figure, so the, the additional new officers, is 252, of which there are 69 uh, PCSOs. Um, at the moment, in the constabulary, we have 185 special... Well, this, these figures were as of um, April, so give me, if you can give me a bit of latitude on, on, uh, on six to eight weeks. Um, uh, there are 185 specials currently volunteering, um, outstanding men and women across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight who are uh, volunteering to help us. And I had a meeting actually last night with ACC Craig Dibden to talk about how we can potentially grow and expand that. Uh, very much want to be encouraging um, specials into the force. Um, Police, um, police officers, we have just over 3,000, 3,033. PCSOs, 246. And in total, when you add in the admin staff as well, the constabulary has 5,426 staff in total. So that gives you sort of an idea of the quantum of where they're at and where we're looking to move to. In terms of crime stats, I've been looking at these over the last three years. So, of course, I can focus on where I think my commissioning needs to be and, you know, where I can be adding the most value. And actually, most high harm and, and lower harm crimes across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight have dropped throughout the last 12 months, which of course you would expect because of the pandemic of people being indoors. So maybe not a true reflection of where we're really at. Um, however, there are still some, in spite of the pandemic, that have gone up, and they are particularly around drugs. So drug trafficking, drug possession, um, and also the possession of offensive weapons. So the majority of that obviously being knives. Um, and also the number of public order offences have gone up, again, because often they're connected to breaches with COVID. Um, so there are some areas, um, and clearly the war on drugs, um, we're not winning it, uh, and there is a lot more that needs to be done. Um, through my office, we do spend um, £3.6 million per year in commissioning, and it probably won't be a surprise to you in where those areas of spending are. So 25% of the commissioning and the grants that we give out, either through our own direct uh, precept that we receive and or through grants that we are successful in bidding for to the, the Home Office or to various government departments, 25% of that goes on domestic abuse. And I was in custody in Portsmouth uh, three Fridays ago, um, and and there were 15 people in custody at half 10 in the morning, half of them were domestic abuse, domestic violence cases. So, you know, and that is not, uh, that is not unusual. I asked the custody sergeant and he said Southampton will be very similar and so will Basingstoke. So there is a big issue with domestic abuse and we need to make sure that we are on top of that and there is more to be done. 
30% of the Commission Fund's grants given out go on uh, sec uh, sexual violence and supporting victims of sexual violence, and then 24% on supporting victims of crime across the board. Um, we have got a couple of, we've got lots of bids in at the moment, I think eight or nine bids in, but just a couple I wanted to specifically mention, and that is £155,000 that we're currently bidding for to support male victims of rape uh, and serious sexual assault. And also, um, we have got a bid going in for the round three of the Safer Streets. And you'll know that Southampton uh, Bargate was awarded um, the first amount of money, around £150,000 um, in Southampton to make particularly uh, the park there in the centre of Southampton safer. Round two of Safer Streets, money has gone to Charles Dickens Ward in Portsmouth, to Basingstoke, um, and also to Eastleigh. And round three of the Safer Streets is going to be much more targeted around violence against women and girls. Uh, the Estates Review. So our current Estates plan is almost six years old now. And I think the plan that was formulated was right for where we were at that time six years ago, but the landscape has changed considerably. We now, as we know, have the National Police Uplift Programme, and I've already mentioned here in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight the sort of numbers that we are expecting as an increase. In addition to that, um, you know, we have uh, a, a, a growing police budget now, as I say, I'm hoping, I'm not sure if this is wood or laminate, but that, that continues um, into the future. Uh, certainly last year and this year, the police budget has increased through the Home Office, which we're very grateful for. Um, and therefore, I am going to be undertaking a comprehensive review, which I've already started actually, of the Estates Programme, and I'll be sharing information with you in due course and inviting you to briefings and to come and view the estate and come out on visits with me so you can have a look at what needs replacing and the standard that we're trying to achieve similar to those of the picks maybe not that size but that kind of quality um, in terms of the budget the total budget that sort of comes through my office uh, the vast majority of which as you know is passported onto the constabulary to pay for their uh, wage bill um, is 388 million pound a year and I've been on several calls now with the home office including the home secretary and policing minister and there is consistent talk of a three-year spending review coming Let's wait and see. There has been talk of this before, and it won't surprise you that it didn't happen. But, you know, um, coming out of the pandemic, perhaps the Chancellor would like some stability with telling people this is what you're getting for three years. Who knows? Um, I also um, am quite open to the Chief Constable attending the panel with me, as and when that would be of benefit to you. Um, so, you know, if we can be working together on that, of course your job is to be scrutinising me, but I do appreciate that quite often that means you want to be scrutinising me through asking her some things as well. So perhaps we can work together on our work with the Chair on that moving forward. Criminal justice update. So. Um, Having been a magistrate, as I said, for 16 years, um, you know, this is an area that's perhaps more comfortable for me than some of the new commissioners that have just been elected across the country. Um, and I'm very, very keen to be under the skin of some of the issues that are uh, currently in place with criminal justice partners across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight because some well very often issues that are happening with a different government department, let's say. I don't know, the CPS or probation will have a knock-on effect to policing and therefore the time and effort and angst cause for our officers in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, which then prevents them from detecting crime and keeping our streets safer. Um, the previous commissioner had decided not to take up um, his seat directly on the Hampshire Local Criminal Justice Board. I have decided to take up a seat on that, and in fact, I'm hoping to become the chair as from the next meeting. Uh, I have already ten attended one meeting um, and working very closely with the Chief Constable on some of the issues that need to be discussed in detail. But for those of you that aren't aware, the Local Criminal Justice Board has the lead circuit judge, um, who is Her Honour um, Judge Angela Morris. She's new to our area. She, she is our new presiding judge based in Winchester. Um, you have the Crown Prosecution Service, probation, the prisons, all of the partners that you would expect to be in the room working together. Um, one of the things that I am very concerned about at the moment as the Commissioner for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, and particularly focusing on victims here, is uh, the rape cases uh, reported in Hampshire and the number of those that then lead on to subsequent charge and then into, I mean, the conviction rate is out of our hands, but certainly the, the report to court, as they call it, is, is quite um, a, a key thing. And our numbers here, if you look at National League tables, um, actually, we, we don't fare particularly well. Um, we do have a new head of the Crown Prosecution Service starting, um, I think, in about two weeks' time. 
she's coming from the West Midlands, so certainly it's a conversation I need to be taking up and having with her, with the Chief Constable. We'll be meeting her um, to discuss some of this with her. But certainly I raised it at the first meeting of the LCJB that I attended uh, and made it very clear that it was on my radar. And last week, um, the National Rape Review um, uh, investigation was, was, well, not an investigation, sorry, the Rape Review was published. Um, for those of you that want to have a look at it, it's a national document, it's publicly available. Um, and again, it, it really does shine a little bit of a spotlight on the CPS and uh, and also on forces, constabularies as well, um, but making sure that we are supporting victims as best that we can. Um, in terms of uh, rape victims, um, there is a new um, process that's now in place where they're able to give an, a video interview as put to form part of their evidence in chief when they first go into a police station to report that rape, be it historical or, or much more recent. Um, and uh, HMCTS, Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Service, um, uh, did put out a statement nationally to say that they weren't sure that they could uh, accommodate the evidence being given via, via, via TV screens uh, for evidence in chief for rape victims for up to two years across the country. Uh, I was uh, quite shocked and appalled by that, having just stepped out of a courtroom literally four weeks ago um, and having, screen, having had screens in the courtrooms that I preside over in Portsmouth for many, many years. And throughout the pandemic, we've had breach officers from probation, we've had probation officers, we've had even defence solicitors appearing via video link. So, sounded like a bit of a cop-out to me. Um, anyway, I've pushed back and I've been assured that here in Hampshire, um, uh, we are definitely going to be allowing that um, process to happen immediately. So that's really, really good news, particularly for victims. Um, I'm also sort of looking out for opportunities of where we can be a pilot area to support criminal justice partners um, through the Ministry of Justice when they're looking for uh, different initiatives, particularly to tackle the backlog in courts. Now, the backlog in courts is a significant issue for the criminal justice system because the longer that delay between someone, you know, reporting a crime to getting to court, the weaker their evidence is likely to be. And it's also not particularly fair on uh, people who are awaiting trial and or their sentence as well. So uh, actually, we are doing quite well here, but nonetheless, we do still have a backlog. I think there are around 500 odd cases uh, for the Crown Courts and in excess of 2,000 for magistrates. Um, there is a Nightingale Court, which is a, a court outside of a courtroom, for want of a better word, um, for lower level crimes um, that are operating across the UK. And we have just one here in Hampshire, which is operating from the Great Hall in Winchester. And it's actually um, Crown Court, it's, it's Winchester Crown Court stuff that's actually going there there as opposed to lower level magistrate type stuff. Um, there are national evidence centres, uh, 20 of those in operation across the UK, where victims can give their evidence from a national evidence centre um, so that they are not having to be, uh, courts, are, courts can deal with the COVID restrictions that are currently still in place. Um, social distancing uh, restrictions lifting after the 19th of July, we're, we're told. Um, the courts will still be operating a social distancing model for a period of time just until uh, they are assured that they can keep people completely safe. And finally, really, I think um, on the on the criminal justice update from me, um, the wisdom of the privatisation of probation was found to not be so much wisdom in the end. Um, and so that's been deprivatised. I don't know if that's a real word, but anyway, it's been deprivatised as of last Monday. So they are now back to the National Probation Service working with the um, National Offender Management Service, NOMS. So uh, you will um, probably may read something about that if you don't already know. Um, new Victims Code came into force in April and New Domestic Violence Bill has also gone through which again really puts victims forefront and center of that finally um my police and crime plan i would say james 50 percent of the way through we're getting there I think, we're <laughs> I think we're doing quite well, actually. We've had some really, really good sessions. And obviously, this is building on the consultation that I did throughout the campaign. And having just been elected, um, of course, uh, that is my mandate. That's my manifesto. Having said that, I, I, my manifesto and my election was based on the things that I thought and what I knew and what the public told me. There is, there is much more... Um, that obviously we also need to be consulting on. And I really, really want people's feedback. The document's going to be shorter, snappier, and punchier. Probably a little bit like me, because I'm shorter than my, pre my predecessor. Probably a little bit more punchier and probably, what um, uh, about snappier? But there you go. But anyway, um, so, you know, it, I really want to make this document very relevant. I want to make it jump off the page to people. Um, I want it to be the first completely sort of, um, what's the word I was thinking of? It's sort of a, a completely interactive plan. So my challenge to James was... Uh, you know, I have a, a brother that has, you know, learning difficulties, and and he is his 
his uh, academic level is very, very low indeed because of his learning difficulties and his, and his disabilities as well. And actually, I, I said, right, I want him to be able to sit in front of a computer or, or pick up a document, but particularly sit in front of a computer, which is how most people will read this plan now, let's be honest, um, and be able to decipher what's there. So really ABC language, um, but getting the point across. Also, if we're talking about an issue, let's talk about violence against women and girls. If you hover over the issue, a little video might play. So if you're blind, you can listen. If you're deaf, you can watch with subtitles. So we make sure that it's really interactive and it's really putting it in plain Queen's English for people so that it really does mean something to them. Because I really want this document to really support victims and people that are running charities and you as our key partner. I really want this to be, um, you know, a, a document that's actually going to be an aid memoir to what we're all collectively trying to do. Um, there will be some consultation throughout August and September, and I'm hoping that by the time uh, all of that is done, by your next meeting in October, it's here, ready for sign-off, and we can publish straight after we've got your feedback on that. Um, in terms of finally working with the panel, um, I'm actually really excited about this. Um, you know, I've, I've been in, in challenging, scrutineering, robust situations, both as an executive leader of a council and as leader of the opposition. Um, I welcome challenge. I think it's healthy. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I really hope that this is, a, 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 you know, a new chapter for all of us. Um, and, you know, for me, making sure that I'm attending the CSP meetings, which many of you will be sitting on, uh, the community safety partnership meetings for people watching online, um, is really, really important and having regular visits and meetings with council leaders, with cabinet members, doing walk-arounds with your district commanders um, is, is incredibly important, as is working with parish councils and Neighbourhood Watch, um, who are thousands of eyes and ears out there. And that, Chair, is my annual report. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure the Commission's announcements will be briefer in future. Um, uh, but it's a great start. Thank you very much, Donna. I've got three questions already, or questioners lined up already. So I've got Councillor Beavis, Councillor Vaughan, and Councillor Renyard to start us off. So first, John, you. Commissioner, can I say thank you very much for an excellent overview of uh, your briefing was superb. Thank you. Um, as the uh, chairman of the Gosport Community Safety Partnership, I was delighted to see your priorities at the top there. Um, it is um, something that we get all the time. Where's the bobbies on the beat? There's no visibility. We've got the neighbourhood policing teams whose job it is to fulfil the role of the bobby on the beat, but clearly that's not being visible enough. And I was glad to hear that you're enlisting more um, special constables because maybe that's where the visibility can come from with the special constables being the community policing team that, that wander around and just talk to local people and make them feel safe, make them feel that there is policing there. So, uh, I mean, I've thought about this quite a lot because dealing with um, the way the police force operates now. The public don't really understand the sort of the split between um, neighborhood policing, between response and patrol, between investigation. There is a complete split now, whereas the police in uh, olden days, they did everything. Um, now they don't, they specialize in, in areas. So uh, I would say thank you for, for looking at that problem because it, it is one that um, in the community we, we hear all the time. And uh, I, I, as you and I have spoken recently about antisocial behavior, you've put that right at the top. And the response to 101 calls for antisocial behavior, um, I think that is a really important issue because we want people to report crimes, and if they r report them and, uh, and nothing happens, then that becomes a real problem. They say, what's the point in, in, in reporting them? And I, I think we can actually make more use of, of, of this device for uh, reporting crimes. There is a very good app that is not used now, but, but it, there's a good app that actually enables uh, people to report crimes immediately um, and I think we should we should work on that because if you go online to report a crime 
It's quite a long process that you have to go through reporting the crime. Reporting it via the mobile, which uh, most people have these days, is much faster and, and much more efficient. Um, so those are just some points I'd just like to make across. I don't uh, have a, a question in that. Just thank you for what you obviously identified at an early stage um, to uh, address some of these real problems on the street. So thank you. Mac, thank you. I'll be very brief with my replies back on these because I appreciate we want to get through as many questions as possible. Um, ASB, really big. Your area, your car park, your churchway, your, your motor circuit that is becoming there. That's, it's, though, it's not sort of your little one weekend issue. It's where you have a persistent ongoing issue where the district commander and or your staff could be escalating it up to the ASB task force and then we can be working together, constabulary, my office and your CSP on what that solution is. That's absolutely key. Um, so thank you for the support on the ASB. ASB stuff. Um, the, the specials, absolutely. And you saying about how public don't understand what the different specialisms in police are, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think the public need to know, so their expectation management of who's doing what is key. And that's why through my social media and by working with you on your social media, if we make a video together or a photograph or visit, whatever, that we can be taking the public on this journey that I mentioned at the very beginning. It's absolutely key to be telling them what what's actually going on, what the police are doing to serve them. 101 calls, couldn't agree more. New customer management platform, CMP, is in the, is in the force. Very expensive new um, uh, kit that's running from Netly uh, through the 101 and the 999 service. All it does at the moment, it's like a hoover. It sucks everything in, takes all the information in, all the calls, crime reporting online, you know, crime reporting that's coming in from officers that are reporting stuff when they're being told of things directly. It all comes in, but it doesn't give anything back out ever. So Ben Snuggs, who is the ACC, soon to become the new Deputy Chief, uh, Chief Constable of Hampshire in the Isle of Wight, he's got responsibility for this. So I challenged him and I said, you know, this really expensive piece of kit, please tell me, after we've just spent millions of pounds on it, um, that actually it can turn around and look back out as well and it can be giving information back. He said, absolutely. So it has the capability. It's about having the inclination to want to do it. So actually, when people report their shed break-in or their bike there from their garage and they get given a crime number and that's it, actually, in, you know, in defence of the constabulary, there is stuff going on behind the scenes there. So when, for example, if you live in Gospel, in Leon Solent, there have been six reports of that in a, in a postcode area over a two or three period, the neighbourhood teams are actually factoring that into their walk routes, what they're doing, keeping an eye on stuff. Is it because someone's just been let out of, out of prison that's a, that's a burglar or, you know, what's going on? So actually, tell the public you're doing it because you are doing it. And it's, doesn't, it's not rocket science, like I said at the beginning, to just turn around and face back out and send them a text because you've got their mobile number from when they phoned up or when they reported online, send them a text and let them know what's going on. We're working on that. There's a whole plan behind that. Very happy to bring you guys in on that one to work with me. And you've obviously got some ideas. would be good to work on that. And in terms of the app, as you all know, we've got joint operations with Thames Valley for a lot of things. Uh, they're almost like our sort of, um, you know, our, our, our sister organisation. And um, I've got a meeting next Friday morning with Matthew Barber and the officers in the joint operations unit where we are moving forward on a discussion around the app for reporting crime. Much easier, much simpler. Young people don't pick up the phone anymore. Everything's done via messenger. We know that. Um, and the website, not good. It's poor for reporting crime. I agree with you. It's really not great. Needs improving. Thank you, Donna. I am going to ask members to keep their questions short. And Donna, if you could give short answers, that'd be great, because we are against, up against time. Um, Councillor Vaughan, you may have seen Caroline whisper in my ear, because you're not officially appointed to the panel, we can't actually allow you to ask a question. But if you want to ask a question, then send it through to Caroline, who can make sure the commissioner answers it and everybody else will get to see it after today, if that's all right. Thank you. Uh, can we go to Councillor Renyard, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, Donna. Um, you've, you've laid out quite a, an extensive plan, something uh, quite broad. Uh, there seems to be uh, r rather a lot there for, uh, for you to get your teeth stuck into, so looking forward to that. I'm uh, particularly pleased to hear uh, your promise to deliver 600 police by 2023. Um, as you're probably aware, we've recently had a raise, uh, quite a substantial raise in the police precept locally. Um, in order to cover some of those uh, new officers and some of those officers that are due to depart. Um, 
And you also mentioned that uh, there's been, a, I think you said, a, a gradual reduction in spending from central government, I think was the way you put it, which uh, I absolutely agree with you uh, on. You won't be surprised to hear. Um, I think... The, uh, from my perspective, the uh, spending on police locally has is, is fallen really short, um, and, and that's made it very difficult for delivery. And now that we're asking uh, taxpayers to, um, to uh, invest um, in supporting the, 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 um, uh, the recruitment of these new officers, I'd just like to ask um, how you feel that the uh, ongoing funding uh, for that will continue um, will there need to be a further increase in the police precept locally? Um, or are you satisfied that uh, government funding will come through to uh, continue to support your plans as you move forward beyond 2023? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, a good question, and particularly for your area, which desperately needs some of those extra officers, as you know. Um, the police precept funding is built into our base grant now, so there is no risk of that being taken away. You know, though that becomes part of the, the formula grant that we get from the Home Office each year. So that is protected funding. Um, but beyond that, there's more that we can do. There's more that I can do to be driving efficiencies um, so that we can go beyond the 600. That's my hope. I can't commit to that right now because I'm only sort of in... seven in week seven um, but that's what I very much want but certainly the um, ongoing issue of funding with Hampshire and the Isle of Wight Constabulary um, well yes I mean as you're aware I'm sure from the funding formula it's it's far from ideal um, and I have had co uh, conversations two conversations with the policing minister and a conversation with the Home Secretary about this since I've been elected and in fact before I was elected um, I think there's unanimity amongst commissioners across the country that it needs reviewing and from the policing minister. So we're in the hands of the Home Secretary and the Treasury and I'll keep you posted. Thank, Thank you, you, Donna. Um, I'm not going to take any more questions, but just so everybody knows who's on the list. I've got Trevor, I've got Dave, I've got Narinda, I've got Tony, I've got Margot, and then I've got Ian. So, Trevor. Yes, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I was very encouraged about the, uh, your views on the police crime plan. I, I think I've probably everybody knows I've been very critical of that in the past. So to hear what you're actually saying, what you propose to do, I'm certainly looking forward to that. I guess my question really is on 101, for instance. I was a victim of crime in January, uh, went through the normal sort of procedures. The particular individual, we, I've sent photographs of this particular individual. We know she's operating in other areas in Hampshire, and I've had absolutely nothing back whatsoever, you know, which I found very disappointing. So I know how the victims feel in that respect. So I guess my question really is that you're making the point you want to get sort of more feedback out, etc. and your pre previous predecessor said much the same, but nothing's actually happened. So I guess the question is, how are you going to achieve that? Yeah, that's a re I think that's a really good challenge, um, Trevor. Thank you for the question. Councillor Cartwright, I should say. Apologies. Um, because actually, you know, words do come easy, don't they? But... You have worked with me for a number of years, <laughs> and you know that I am uh, seldom a person of just words. It is, you know, I, I do like to back everything up with action. And if I can't do something, I'll be really honest with you. And if I can, I will. And actually, you know, to my two predecessors, I kind of feel slightly sorry for them because they they were, um, you know, commissioning services and presiding over, um, you know, police services in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight at a, at a challenging time nationally for this country since 2012, when the first you know, when Simon Hayes was first elected. I'm almost the lucky commissioner that's, that's now been elected at a point when police budgets gr grew in 2020 and in 2021. Uh, we've got that commit. We have a prime minister at the moment that seems to like spending money as opposed to previous ones that, that took a different approach. Um, and therefore, from where I'm, where I'm sat right now with the police uplift programme, you know, like I said at the very beginning, you know, policing isn't necessarily rocket science it's a numbers game more police more more detection more prevention that's what it's about so um t only time will tell I, I can only back up what i'm going to say to you by time i absolutely take it on board but for people like yourself who have been a victim of crime and had no feedback there are some very simple tweaks that i'm challenging the constabulary to say i'd like you to look at i think you should be doing this why aren't you doing that and i will continue i'm very happy to work with you offline on the plan and that particular issue around the cmp Brilliant. Thank you, Donna. Over to Dave. Thank you. It's a short question, but with a bit of narrative to back it up. So the question is, will you accept a gift of thought? Um, and our narrative to go with that, so like uh, probably most members in here, I was really pleased to hear the range of your focus, um, particularly that it's beyond policing. 
um, and takes us into community safety, criminal justice. Um, and as independent members of the PCP team, I'm sure Shirley and I are keen to represent the lay view because there's a lot of people out there want to feel safe. Mm. Uh, they want to feel they're being listened to. Um, and particularly the harder to reach groups, I think. Um, I'm very supportive of the deputy, so you don't want to upfront about that because you've just listed a massive uh, agenda. And, and in my view is you, you need that support. Um, and the other thing, that the gift of thought is that as a panel, we are here to challenge, but we are also here to support. And I think everybody in this panel would be keen to support you because your success is our success. And that means our community have got to benefit. That's, that's it. Thank you, Dave. That means, that means a lot, actually, um, because you do sometimes feel a little bit like an island here. I feel like I'm the Isle of Wight today, actually, I have to be honest. Um, but, I, you know, because um, that, that challenge is key, and I really, really value you saying that about the support, because I'm a very, I'm a team player. I like working, I like, I'm a people person. Um, you know, I want to be working with you guys as a team. I said at the beginning, you are a team. I'm a bit on the outside, but I really would like to be part of your team without crossing the lines of you having your healthy challenge to me. I love the concept, gift of thought. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Narinda. Thank you, I'll keep this quick, Chairman. Um, Donna, you have hit the ground sprinting, and I'm really pleased um, to hear everything that you've had to say today. Um, my questions are around that partnership approach, and I hope that that's something that you'll seriously adopt. Um, but with areas around, um, you mentioned counterterrorism. I think there's some work, hopefully, that we can actually assist you with in adopting a dare to share approach with counterterrorism policing that we have um, with our current neighborhood teams, uh, etc. The police estate aspect of it, I'm sure that um, you'll, you'll remember from uh, previous conversations that this is a, a conversation item that has gone on for years and years and years. And please look on your local authority partners to give ideas, because we've all got local plans and I'm sure that we can actually mold uh, and help you in that area. Um, I think looking at, you mentioned the Safer Streets Fund. Now, um, it, I completely understand that the demand um, means that funding goes to areas with um, higher crime rates. However, don't forget our little districts who work exceptionally hard in trying to adopt that prevention approach or that preventative approach. Um, and we do very, very well. And because we do well, um, let's hope we're not forgotten um, when it comes to funding streams. And lastly, the residents of Havant um, will bat me over the head if I don't mention traveler incursions. We've spoken about that, and I know there's a bill um, making its journey through Parliament at the moment. However, I think it's a priority area for a lot of people in this room, um, and I would seek your assurance to um, make sure that it's something that's a priority for you too. Thank you very much, <coughs> Narinda. Some really good points there. Um, and in terms of the counterterrorism and the dare to share, very happy to be working in that space. Um, we have our, um, there is an ACC who leads, Assistant Chief Constable called Pete O'Doherty, some of you may have met before, may have heard of, who um, is the lead of our Southeast uh, Counterterrorism and Regional Organised Crime Unit. Um, it may be an idea that I ask him to come and present to the panel um, to give you an update. Um, probably would have to be done in an informal basis, but for him to be able to present to you uh, some information around some of the things that, you know, that he's working on and the kind of national strategies that are uh, being played out here in the southeast as well so i can talk to him about that for you um in terms of the police estate local plans absolutely and in fact you and i have had a couple of very very useful discussions already around around the way that we can be working together you're right we are going to be looking for new spaces and working with the councils to where they own land or property that we could be buying leasing whatever absolutely um in terms of the safer streets fund um and the point you made very well about councils uh can really support with that well, we're going to be talking about Luke Stubbs later on, who's at the back of the room, but, um, and James will, will uh, confirm this, that he, there is, he is a massive champion of, he thinks councils can do things cheaper than the police can. 
<laughs> he keeps saying to me, we could save money. If, you know, he said to me several times um, when we've been idea discussing um, about things, you know, should he get your support and be appointed as deputy, that actually, you know, councils through community wardens can do things cheaper than police if you've got a PCSO or a police officer, particularly police officers with their 31% plus uh, pension contribution, which is considerable. Um, so actually, there are lots of ways that we can be working with councils to share ideas, save money, work more efficiently, really up for doing that and taking some of that forward with you. Traveller incursions, yeah, big issue. Um, some of you probably have seen the comments I made about the A33, uh, the pony track racing that happened last month, which literally brought a dual carriageway in Hampshire right through the centre of Hampshire, very key dual carriageway to a standstill. It affected from Basingstoke right the way down to Winchester and heading down towards Southampton. Um, there were elderly people in their homes whose carers couldn't get to them. Um, it was an absolute disgrace what happened, and I was appalled, and that's why I took the action I did by being very bold in the press and making sure that we had Op Gossamer stood up both last weekend and the weekend before by working with the constabulary um, and with um, Paul Bartolomeo, who was the gold lead on that for the constabulary. Um, you know, I've made my thoughts very clear to the constabulary about uh, a soft touch in this area is not acceptable, and that goes for incursions as well. Um, I think that we I need to be working with councils across the county on a solution here I've spoken to a couple of people about some ideas I've got around um, around sites permanent and temporary and uh, you're right through the new police crime court sentencing bill there is uh, a, a, a part in that that refers to um, travellers being able to be moved on or not just travellers anybody who intends to reside in a vehicle a van a car a caravan overnight on a piece of land that they do not have a right to be on to be moved on within 24 hours rather than the seven eight nine ten days it normally takes for councils to go to court get the eviction and then they move from Haven to Portsmouth Portsmouth to Fairham Fairham to Southampton so you know it's just ridiculous it's costing all of us so much money so hopefully in this role one of the things I can be doing is pulling things together I'll work with you on that one if that's okay Brilliant. Thank you. Now to Tony. Thanks, Chair. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Donna. You can't see me. I'm Hello, here. Tony. <laughs> I'll stand up. It's easier. Uh, it's really an appeal I'm making. I'm listening to you. Don't forget, not everybody's online, especially older people. We've had closures of libraries in Hampshire, which is not, in my view, I don't want to be political, but which is not good, which a lot of the older people did start using. So when we do communicate, well, when you do communications, can you make sure some of it is handed out, leaflets or whatever, because we don't all get online. And I'm, I'm most probably the one of them around here who's been forced onto it. <laughs> but, uh, thank you. Well, I shall make sure I hand deliver your police and crime plan to you, Tony, personally. But no, in fact, it's a very good point. And we do need to make sure that in this digital world, we're not leaving people behind. So thank you for making it. And very much we'll take that on board. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you very much. And I can I can confer Tony Tony Jones tries his best on IT. <laughs> he tries his best. Um, so let's go to Margot. Thank you, Chairman. Donna, good morning. Hello. Uh, first point is the Nightingale Court in Winchester is in the Guild Hall, not the Great Hall. Oh apologies. Okay. That's quite thank all right. You. We're we're finding it very useful. Um, could I also ask for your attention to the reporting of dodgy van type information, suspicious behaviour. Mm -hmm. If you do that online at the moment, it is 30 minutes out of your life and they want to know your grandmother's date of birth. Um, it doesn't encourage people to report the data to the police rather than on Facebook. And I think we really have to work on overcoming that hurdle. Mm. Uh, the third point is on, on G&T sites. I was very lucky to have the input of the police when we were looking at our Gypsy and Traveller policy for the local plan. I'm sure all local representatives are working on another local plan. Um, I very much valued their input. I think it is key. And transit sites are so important. Um, and we need to work together on, on that. And I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Margot. It's so important. And in fact, Simon, I have spoken to Councillor Bound about this, and you're absolutely right about those transit sites. Um, and 
and I also mentioned it to Narinda, you know, and I think I was talking to John about it. Those that I've caught up with already that are CSP chairs and or cabinet members, um, I have discussed this, but I will make sure that when we have our one-to-one -one that I can go through that. And then I think if I get broad support, it's probably going to be a case of pulling everyone together um, and taking it forward. But I think it has to be Hampshire. The Isle of Wight actually is 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 separate here and they, are, they have a le less of a problem, obviously, than we do. Um, but it has to be, I think, a Hampshire-wide approach because if it's not, it's just, you know... It just shunts the problem onto the next council again. So it's quite a big piece of work, but I'm I'm certainly up for it. I've, been to, I've talked to James and the team about it in the office as well. In terms of the suspicious vehicle behaviour, you're talking about reporting on the Hampshire Constabulary website. Yeah, again, same point John made. It's it's not great. Um, and Ben Ben no Ben ACC Ben Snugs is absolutely on that. And um, I'm going to be carrying on working. So if you want to talk to me offline about this, I'd be really happy to catch up. Thank, Thank you. you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And lastly, Ian. Thank you. Can you hear me? Congratulations. Thank you. And can I just say I'm very heartened by what's uh, within your report. It's really uh, quite wide-reaching. Um, I'm very, very keen to see the police and the constabulary engage with our young people. And I think that that, more than anything in your report, is something that we can uh, take, uh, take advantage of in uh, actually uh, the uh, antisocial behavior and the other bits and pieces that come along with it at low level, prior to it, uh, as you quite rightly said, escalating. Um, Will you be working um, on visiting the schools, and if so, will you be taking along, uh, you know, the um, uh, the community safety partnership representatives, etc., so that there is a cohesive way of working? I think that you know um, we're in this together, and I think that you know, as as Dave Stewart said earlier, you know, we're here to assist, not just to uh, scrutinise. And so that's one point. And the other thing is I, I was uh, pleased to see that you're reviewing the or uh, estate strategy and looking at quite possibly bringing some uh, uh, police stations back into, um, into use. And would that also include um, an additional few um, custody suites because uh, it's all right apprehending and moving people on, but sometimes... Uh, the constabulary have a diff difficult job in moving people on instead of actually saying, OK, you're going to go and have to uh, cool down for a while and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not, not pushing too, too much away because you've got a mammoth task, but um, just a couple of those elements, and I've got many more, but I won't, um, I won't continue uh, at this moment. You've had enough to, enough to speak about, I think. Well, they say save the best or last, don't they, Ian? And, uh, you know, the beautiful Isle of Wight is, um, is somewhere, as I, as I said during the campaign, I can see Benbridge from my bedroom window, so it's very important to me because I look at it every morning. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, some really good points you make there, particularly engaging with young people, and you mentioned schools. Um, very, very happy for uh, CSP chairs and or cabinet members for community safety to be coming out on visits with me. Um, I have done a couple of visits already around um, the county and I have contacted CSP chairs, you know, where I can to say, oh, sorry, cabinet members to say, please come along. I've done something in Southampton. I've done something in Portsmouth and I've got, I'm actually going to Romsey for a walk around with the police this evening. So if anyone's in the Romsey area and fancy joining me and Caroline Noakes, you're very welcome to come on a Friday night walk around in Romsey Town Centre. I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit nicer than Commercial Road in Portsmouth but there you go. <laughs> How dare I say that? Um, in terms of the school visibility, it's really important. I've been to two schools so far. So I went to a um, junior school, uh, Hiltonbury, um, just north of Winchester, um, a couple of weeks ago. So it was years four, five, no... Yeah, uh, four, five, and six, so it's primary. Um, and that's part of our Cyber Ambassadors scheme. So through through my office, um, they have commissioned for a number of years the Cyber Ambassador Programme, where they are training up children um, in, you know, and in secondary as well to be eyes and ears and protectors for the rest of their year group, to be sharing, you know, healthy 
behaviors online and if someone messages you what to do and if someone's sending you an image or someone wants your mobile number or you know wh where the red, red flag should be what websites are safe which ones aren't if someone wants to meet you in a park what you should do um, and actually it's a really a really successful program but it does mean that we're getting in schools and we're talking to people and um, I went to the, the other school I went to is Portland High School for Girls so in, in, in uh, Dave's Patch um, and uh, and actually it was secondary school um, so years uh, seven eight nine and when I walked in one of the girls went oh you're a woman <laughs> I thought, well, my girls' school. That's encouraging. <laughs> so they, they thought that like they thought I was going to be a man because I was a police commissioner. Um, and actually, at the end of it, she said, "Oh, it's been really good to meet you, actually, because you know, because you're you're female." And and actually, so even if it's about the staying safe online, or even if it's about being inspirational in some other way to encourage young girls to have aspiration to want to, you know, do roles that might be upstanding in their communities. Um, but very important. Very happy to do joint visits with you. Um, I am planning on visiting. I have been to the island twice. Uh, my next visit is beginning of August. Date's just waiting to be confirmed. I've got two weekly catch-ups with Sarah Jackson, um, all going in the diary now, the district commander for the island. So any issues, please, please, please feedback. I'm very happy to bring you in on anything or any of your colleagues. Uh, you know, And I have been to a meeting at the Isle of Wight Council as well um, when I came over on the 14th or 15th of June, I think it was. Um, I was supposed to be going to a school next week. Um, that one has had to be postponed because they had a COVID outbreak in the year I was going to um, and finally custody um, I mean in Hampshire at the moment um, there would there would not be an increase in you know if I'm opening like Bitten Police Station for example which is one that we are looking at very closely and will be opening uh, you know next summer um, you know that that would not have custody in it they would still go to the pick in at Southampton, the old Southampton Central the pick there um, in, in Southampton in the middle of Southampton um, but uh, the Isle of Wight is a different kettle of fish completely uh, your needs are different and because of the unique situation of the island with you having fire arms and you having uh, public order uh, you know you you actually need to have quite a bit of specialism on the island because to get it over from the mainland would take too long so whilst whilst Southampton Basic and Portsmouth have got a pick a police investigation centre you will have a hub because it will be a pick plus it's going to have other bits so we're working through the model at the moment as to what that lo may look and, and when I went over there um, last month I did go and drive past Parkhurst Albany and uh, Camp Hill, um, because you'll know the Camp Hill situation. Um, and I've also now got a contact who is the lead property person for the Ministry of Justice so that I can be talking to them about their... Uh, they want There's some provision of Camp Hill they want to keep, but there's a bit that they don't. Um, I'm not saying that's the right location because I think for the, you know it, it may not... The response times may be too long with that road outside, but... I'm throwing all ideas open. Very happy to take this up with, with you and others um, in the future, um, uh, you know, on that as well, on the, on the specifics. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Commissioner. I think that's sort of been a really useful start of our conversation, our relationship going forward. So thank you for that. Thank you for that, members, um, and your uh, well-articulated questions. Um, what we need to do now, if I may, is, is move forward on the agenda, which really looks at some more items which are retrospective as far as annual uh, reports. So if I can move us on to item 10, which is the Police and Crime Panel annual report, which are on pages 19 and 32 of the papers. Uh, as members, we're presented with a draft of the annual report for 2020-21. Um, the forward from the chair will be added after the draft has been agreed by members. Do uh, any members have any comments or questions which Caroline will answer for us? I see some shakes of heads. No. Last chance. Nope, brilliant, thank you very much. So, the proposed recommendations are that the panel receive and agree the draft annual report, and that following the meeting, uh, an additional forward from the chairman, the final report is published. Are we all agreed? Perfect, thank you very much. Then moving on to item 11, the Police and Crime Panel Annual Complaints Report, pages 33 to 36. This report outlines the complaints made against Michael Lane as the previous commissioner over the last 12 months. Um, Caroline, would you just like to introduce the report to us and provide an overview? Thank you, members. Um, so the annual report covers the period from June 2019 to June 2020, um, which was a time when Michael Lane was in office as PCC. Um, members will notice that the report um, highlights that 10 complaints were received during the period, which whilst it represents an increase from last year, um, 
where only th where three potential complaints were received. Um, for last year, only two of the ten complaints were actually recorded. Um, just for members' information, um, in accordance with the panel's complaint protocol, um, decisions for complaints not to be recorded or to be disapplied are taken by the monitoring officer and they're taken in consultation with the chair of the complaint subcommittee. Um, all complainants are advised of this decision in writing um, and there is an explanation as to why the decision was reached. Generally, the reasons behind that are because the complaints relate to an operational policing matter, which aren't within the remit of the panel's powers. They may relate to a policy decision of the commissioner, for example, um, a complaint around the precept decision, um, or equally maybe any other matter which is not attributed to the conduct of the PCC, which is that which is probably within the panel's powers. Um, so I'm happy to take questions from members if there are any others on the report at all. Any questions? No. Last chance. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. So the proposed recommendation is that the annual complaints report is noted. Are we all agreed? Perfect. Thank you very much. Moving then on to item 12, the police and, and crime panels financial monitoring leading to the 2022-23 grant budget agreement on pages 37 to 44. Um, the paper sets out from the finance officer to the panel and Hibbert, the, uh, monitoring the police and crime panel's budget for 2021, um, the part year performance against the 2021-22 budget and a proposal budget for the panel for 2022-23. Any questions from members on the budget? Again, I've got some shaking of heads. Perfect, You're getting let off light here. Caroline, excellent. So our recommendations in front of us are that the panel notes the financial position for 2021, that we note the current performance against budget for this financial year, that we agree the revised budget for 2021-22, we agree the proposed budget for the panel for 2022-23, subject to the confirmation of the government grant for 2022-23. Are we all agreed? Perfect, thank you very much. Then moving on to item 13 which is for the Police and Crime Panel Membership of Working Groups, pages 45 to 60. Um, the report really sets out uh, the required membership of the panel's working groups and subcommittees. Um, in the pre-meeting yesterday, for those of, uh, members that weren't present, we sort of did take some um, suggestions of people who are interested in certain panels. Caroline, I wonder if I could hand over to you as far as populating those, is that all right? And then you can take us through the, the sort of suggestions we've already got. Yeah, thank you, um, Chairman. So, yes, as you, as you suggested, a number of members came forward yesterday to um, give nomination for the working groups. Um, I'll note those down as we go through each of the working groups. Um, if there are other members in the room today that would like to raise an interest in joining those working groups, if you could sort of notify me or raise a hand, I'll take a note of that. And then following today's meeting, I'll meet with the chair. We will look at the available spaces within each of the working groups and then the chairman will make a final decision on membership for this year and we'll confirm that in writing. Um, so as you're aware, the panel has a, com a complaint subcommittee and three other working groups. They have the finance working group, the police and crime plan working group and the equality and diversity working group. Um, so in terms of the complaint subcommittee, yesterday we received interest from Dave Stewart, Shirley Young, Councillor John Beavis, Councillor Tony Jones, and Councillor Philip Lashbrook. Um, are any other members interested in joining the complaint subcommittee? Okay, lovely. We will take those names forward. Um, with the complaint subcommittee, it is a proportional appointment because it's a formal subcommittee of the panel. So if we haven't met the proportionality within the appointments that have come forward, we'll write out to members to seek further volunteers. Um, the Police and Crime Plan Working Group, um, Councillor Simon Bound, Councillor Matthew Renyard, Councillor Dave McKinney and Councillor Philip Lashbrook have shown an interest in that working group. Um, are there any other members that would like to put their name forward for that working group, please? Lovely, thank you. Um, the Finance Working Group, we've had interest in joining that working group from Councillor Mark Steele, Councillor Margot Power and Councillor Stuart Bailey. Would any other members like to come forward with an interest in joining the finance working group at this stage, please? Happy to join the finance. Lovely, thank you. 
and then finally the Equality and Diversity Working Group and we took interest from Councillor Matthew Renyard and Councillor Ian Stevens and would other members like to um, volunteer to join that working group. Thank you Councillor Baines. Caroline can I put my name down as well? Certainly. Any other members at this stage? That's lovely, thank you. Um, so as we've explained, I'll now discuss those with the chairman and we'll confirm as soon as possible via email after the meeting, the membership, and we'll then start out to send out um, meeting invitations for the year ahead. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you very much, Caroline. We'll move then on to item 14. So the governance update for the Police and Crime Panel on pages 61 to 68. Um, an update to the confirmation hearing protocol is presented on pages 61 to 68 of your pack. Um, Caroline, just to introduce um, the report for us. Thank you. Um, Chairman, apologies. Before we move on to that item, could we just ask members to agree the recommendation oh, for the previous? Sorry. Thank you. You were quite right. So the proposed recommendation for item 13 is that the panel agree the final membership of the complaint subcommittee, police and crime plan working group, finance working group, the equality diversity working group for the 2021-22 municipal year. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Perfect. Thank you very much. Caroline. Thank you. Um, so the confirmation hearing is a very light update. I'm um, ahead of this afternoon's meeting. I just reviewed the document which we last used in 2017 um, and made some very minor grammatical changes. Um, they were mainly to remove the instances of he or she um, and replace them with the pronouns they and them. Um, aside that, there isn't any significant change to the protocol itself. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Any questions on any of that? So are we happy that uh, we agree the updated confirmation hearing protocol? Everybody in agreement? Brilliant, thank you very much. Moving on to item 15, the work programme on pages 69 and 74. Outlined in these pages uh, is the work programme for the panel for the municipal year for 2021-22. Um, any questions on any of that? It'll be very familiar to previous panel members. No, no questions. So can we agree that the work programme is agreed? agreed? Brilliant, thank you very much. So that concludes this morning's meeting. Now we'll break until one o'clock. Um, I'll also hand over to Caroline in a minute because of course, um, just from the email, there are some very uh, specific instructions as far as eating lunch. Um, including collecting your lunch and bringing it back to your desk so that we all stay in the same places and don't move around. I will ask for the webcast to be ended and just to thank the Commissioner and the Chief Executive for uh, sharing your morning with us. Thank you very much.